The U.S. is preparing to send fresh military assets to the Middle East, including a carrier strike group and a fighter squadron. It is bracing for a further escalation of hostility, hostilities as Iran vows retaliation for the killing of a senior Hamas leader in Tehran earlier this week. It blames Israel for the attack. Israel has not commented publicly either way. New today, the U.S. Embassy in Beirut, Lebanon, is telling Americans who want to get out of the country to book any ticket available. It's also warning those who do not leave that they, quote, should not rely on the U.S. government for assisted departure or evacuation in a crisis. I want to bring in now retired U.S. Army Major General Dana Pitar to talk more about this. Uh, General, I, I want to ask you to have a listen here to National Security Council spokesman John Kirby as he explains why exactly the U.S. is moving more resources into the region. We've heard the Supreme Leader loud and clear that he intends to uh, avenge this killing of, uh, of a Hamas leader in uh, Tehran uh, and that they want to conduct a, another attack on Israel. We, we can't just assume that uh, we aren't also potentially going to be victims of that kind of an attack. So we've got to make sure we've got the right resources and capabilities in the region. So are, are these capabilities, should we presume, the focus here is additional missile and drone defense, not just for Israeli targets, but also U.S. forces deployed in the region? Well, good afternoon, Jim. I think what uh, uh, John Kirby said, and, and I know John Kirby, is, is that the U.S. military in America is just being prudent uh, by sending a, a stri strike carrier force there, the USS Lincoln a strike carrier group uh, there. But it's to protect American assets, as well as to help defend Israel in case Iran decides to attack. And it does look like Iran is, is going to do something, just not sure what it is at this point. Yeah. So Iran, a number of weeks ago, launched dozens of missiles and drones at Israel, what, what was then an unprecedented attack. The missile defenses, which, by the way, weren't just the U.S. and Israeli, uh, there were other partners, including Arab partners in the region. The missile defenses worked then. I imagine Iran will want to prove it could do better this time. So what might that kind of attack look like? Well, as you mentioned, in April, uh, nearly 300 uh, drones, missiles, and, uh, and, and other assets were fired at Israel. Uh, and it utterly failed. Uh, so this time, Israel should anticipate really a multi-directional attack, which includes from, I mean, from Iran itself, as well as Hezbollah to the north, Houthis to the south, and even Gaza to an extent, um, which would try to overwhelm uh, the air defenses of Israel and Israel's uh, regional allies. So let me ask you this, because in the cycle of violence in the Middle East, and by the way, this has been going on for decades, if and when Iran carries out such an attack, Israel will then say it needs to respond to, to retain deterrence or reestablish deterrence and, and retaliate in some way. I, I just, I, I'm trying to figure out how, how we get out of this cycle. Well, I think it depends on how much damage is done by Iran against Israel. If it isn't a whole lot of damage, uh, then that's where the U.S. Uh, uh, through diplomatic actions, can talk to Israel and say, let's call it a day uh, so we can move on with the ceasefire in Gaza. Yeah. Uh, so I think it depends. It depends on um, the, the level of attack from Iran. What is the danger that the U.S. gets drawn in to this attack? I mean, it, it's going to participate, likely in some way, largely if, if, if they can, right, in a defensive role, providing additional missile defense against and drone defense against any attack that would come from Iran and its proxies. But, I mean, there's a chance that U.S. forces are also hit there, as John Kirby was, was referring to, which, would then, which, which might then generate a U.S. response of its own. So the, so the risk for U.S. involvement, direct involvement, is quite high here, isn't it? There, there is risk uh, of Iran attacking U.S. forces, but that will be on Iran. Iran does not want to have a fight with both the United States and Israel. Iran wants to certainly save face because of the, uh, the assassination of Ismail Haniya on, on its soil. But what Iran does not want is a full-blown war. In a full-blown war, Iran loses.
and perhaps loses its nuclear facilities, which it's highly invested in. Uh, but before we go, as, as we look at the situation, which is, which is again uh, so familiar in, in the region, where is U.S. power at this point? Because there's been a lot of reporting, including by CNN, that the Biden administration has been constantly pushing, pressuring Israel to, to rein in some of its attacks, and yet these attacks continue and, and arguably get more aggressive. Is, is U.S. influence, uh, not just in the region, but, but with Israel, is it, is it declining? I wouldn't say the U.S. influence is declining. Uh, the U.S. forces and the U.S. influence in the Middle East is, is greater than any other power uh, in the world uh, there in the Middle East. Uh, but it is interesting that Israel has sent these really three major assassinations. Yeah. Um, and that may be more on Prime Minister Netanyahu and his situation um, as far as politically in Israel uh, and how he remains in power himself as opposed to a waning of U.S. influence. Yeah, his own partner, former partner in the, in the war cabinet, Benny Gantz, has, has said quite similar. Major General Dana Petard, thanks so much.